Hi, I'm Olma. Flynn. Shreya. March. Kalak. And I'm your DM, Ethan. Welcome to Venture Forth. Previously, you guys had uh, set out from your different locations uh, to complete your different missions that you all had, and you had all found yourself in one location, within the medical tent of Coldcrest Outpost. Um, Some of you had been uh, employed there as a soldier, some of you coming to complete a mission, and others just there by happenstance. You guys had all come together and sort of gotten your brief introductions together, but not before a... Uh, a a strange crystal that was pulled out of March's shoulder suddenly came to life and resurrected a half-orc man uh, from death. As he was laying there, huge hole in his chest, uh, he he burst forth with life, and uh, a strange woman's voice uh, emanated from his mouth, uh, obviously not the voice of this half-orc. This woman seemed confused and almost delighted at her reawakening, and decided to set some zombies upon you guys. She stepped out through a dimension door, exiting the tent, uh, got away, as far as you guys know, and uh, left you guys to fend for yourselves. Uh, You guys quickly dispatched the zombies. You guys uh, really just kicked ass against these things, uh, taking heads off left and right. And after that, you guys inspected these crystals from which the energy came forth and determined that the, the two crystals that remained are still pretty dormant, as far as you can tell. Um, After a bit of discussion about where you guys want to go from here and what you guys should do with the bodies, you guys decided to uh, leave the tent and go into the wilderness to help Shreya with whatever ails his commune up there. So we pick up once again with you guys leaving the medical tent at Coldcrest Outpost and uh, ready to face the world. So as you guys are leaving the tent, you guys see once again the rolling hills of Ondale. And you guys see up to the north uh, a river that scoops up into the uh, Shadow Timberland, a forest, a, a dense, thick forest to the, to the north where Shreya's commune is. <clears throat> so, looking forth into the world now, what would you guys like to do? Um, I think... Oh, I just think that Flynn's kind of walking, like, happily with his map. Happy to be on an adventure. And he's just kind of <laughs> walking behind Triad, just following him. Just looking at the map and looking up and making sure we're going the right way. I'm kind of uh, wringing my, my hands and um, tracing the... Uh, the rings on my necklace and I uh, turned to Shreya and uh, Shreya uh, can you tell us a bit more divulge a bit about uh, what your village has gone through so that we might better prepare ourselves this is a strange dark energy it seems to emanate from different sources and is very as soon as you think you're going into a larger concentration of it it seems to escape away from you all at once, and yet its presence is somehow strangely felt all over. What is it doing to the people of your village? What, what, what kind of effect is it having? It manifests in different ways. In some people it causes terrors in the night. In other ways, the, the livestock and the small children see visions, terrifying visions, and their anecdotal reports that it's driving some people to the brink of their own sanity. And is your village, are they all like you? Or, or is it more people? Oh no, it's, it's a commune of elves. An elven group I've grown rather fond of lately. Right. Just keep well, coming into the forest with me. We'll start to see more and more concentrations of elven wards. And we'll know that we're on the right track. I know somewhat where I'm going. Um, and we're we're just on the um, uh, sort of hilly path right now. Is, is it basically plains in front of us, uh, DM? 
Yes. So um, if you look to the east, there is a path that is going directly back towards Adersfeld. Um, this is a path that Flynn and Shrya know well. This was the path that they came into Coldcrest Outpost on. Um, it winds through rolling hills and fields, and then to your north, there is uh, a river in between yourself and the forest before the river bends north and actually goes into the forest. And there's one more thing I must tell you about this, this energy that's been manifesting. I shudder to even speak it out loud. There are shadow creatures that have been spotted on the outskirts of the commune. They they have sometimes been attacking members of the commune. They are unlike anything I've ever seen before. But they are concentrations of shadow energy, and I... uh, I, I, I cannot even describe them without breaking out into a cold sweat. Also, very big spiders. We did encounter a couple of larger spiders on our way to you. Uh, can the rest of, are, are we all hearing this, DM, or is this or is this exclusively? Yeah, you guys are all all traveling in the group. Okay. Yeah. So I just share a look. I I mean I tilt my head very very far up, um, but I just tilt my head to look at March, and like furrow my brows a little bit and just like whisper to her large spiders i i can i can i can deal with shadow creatures i can you know mess up but a spider comes near me no we go the other way just burn the whole forest down right yeah i mean burn the house leave it it's done rebuild it later but like 100 miles from there is that a private conversation? <laughs> uh, yeah, I said I whispered. Right. I like whispered right, it up sure. to. Try up. On the map, I have. Are we going the right way? Should we? Should we head into the forest now? Well, there there's no time entrance? to lose. I. I think time is of the essence in a situation like this. Um, about how far of a journey is it to get to the, just the edge of the forest from, from the path that we're on? Um, it's going to be uh, about two hours to get to the edge of the forest um, to the north, but there is a river in between you, you and the forest. Uh. And is there a bridge on the path to the river, or is it just like a river cutting straight through? Make a perception check for me. And this is also the river that goes straight into Coldcrest, is that right? Or am I... I, Yeah, so there's a a series of rivers um, that sort of culminate into uh, like a marshland that uh, Coldcrest is sort of right on the outskirts of. um, And then that all culminates into one large river that goes out into the ocean. All right. Is Uh, this... That's a 16... Go ahead, go ahead, March. Sorry. Sorry. Um, go ahead. I'm just curious if this is the same river that we March and Alma were found on. Um, yeah. So the river that you guys were found on was part of um, this little, um, this series of rivers that culminates into the boggy swamp area. Um, so yeah, that's it's sort of part of the same river system. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Kellick, what did you get? Uh, 16. Uh, 16. You, uh, looking at the the land ahead, you don't really see any sort of bridge to cross this river. Mm, all right. And can I tell sort of loosely how, how wide it is, how large the gap? Uh, yeah, looking at the river, um, it's actually, it's, it's still, um, just a little ways away, but you can actually get a sense of the river. Um, it looks to be about a half a mile across. Oh, I hadn't anticipated this. It will be quite more difficult for you earthwalkers to surmount this, this river. Did you just carry him when you came this way in the first place? I, I point to Flynn. We actually came along a different path. Right. Um, um what about the the boat? Are we too far away to get that boat that wasn't there a boat next to Alma and March when when they picked them up? Should we go back and get that or um am I misremembering that? Don't know if it was any shape to to sail. Um um Yeah, it was more we? like a raft. I mean, pieces well, a raft of wood is... tied together. 
Also, if it's possible for us to avoid boats for... Can you give us a day to just not oh, be on the river? Oh, you guys have a thing? Okay. Yeah, no worries. I mean, um, if we got across it, we will, but... Well... Shit happen. I have an idea. Um, Let's hear it. If, so, Trya, can you can you do that thing again where you fly? I don't know if you it might do not it be well. So, uh, crack. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it might not be so practical for me to carry each and every one of us across, especially that one. And I point at March, the hulking Goliath. Right. Um, oh, well, thank you. So my idea is, can you just get over there once? Of course, I can. I can fly myself across at will. Cool. Um, so my idea is to hand you one end of a rope and hand March the other end of the rope once you fly over, and maybe we can use that to get across. You can anchor it over there, and March can hold the other end, and we can slowly, one by one, use the rope to kind of get ourselves over. Are we tight walking, or are we expected to... I mean, how high can we suspend the rope? I don't know. Yeah. Or, like, walk through the water? Yeah, but like holding, holding the onto the rope so that you can how, drag but the, yourself through. The river's got to be deeper than that, no? At this, at um, this uh, stretch of it. Sorry, DM. You, you probably mentioned this, but is, is it how did did uh, Kellick figure out how far across the river was again? It's half a mile uh, wide, Shit, half a mile distance. Able to do that. And is it running really fast? Yeah, are we getting yeah, closer it's, to it? As we... It's a pretty flowing river at this point. You guys have been traveling for. Mm. Um, for about half an hour, 45 minutes, um, and you guys are just coming up on the river, you hear the sound of the river before you actually see it. And once you actually come upon it, it is a, a massive flowing river. Could we have doubled back and crossed it before it became a river? Um, you guys would have to travel further east uh, where the river actually starts in order to get to yeah. the, the start of the river. I see. Hmm. Well, uh, and I guess worst case scenario, we could we could try just having try to fly everyone across and just see how long that would take. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. Uh, we could do two ropes and try to create some sort of a, a bridge. Well, I mean, we could all go in at once and just kind of tie ropes to each other. So if anyone does Swim. lose their fooling or their their, they get swept away. The 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 rope will hold on to them. So, I mean, that could be an option. We just kind of right. tie ropes to everyone and just go in as a group. Is the water flowing towards the towards the Timberland or away from the Timberland? The water is flowing away from the Timberland. Oh. So the water is going to the west. Yes, the water is flowing to the cool. west. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's... Um, so we would still want there to be one rope that we're kind of following, though, because we would otherwise we'd get... Otherwise, we'd go back that way. Right. So, so we still would want... I mean... This is just a suggestion, right? <laughs> but... I'm very small. Shraya could fly me over. And then I'll be on dry land. And I'll have the rope with him. And then there's only three people that have to do the whole tie you together thing. And we'll just kind of keep dragging you along with the rope. We'll pull the rope that's tied around all of you. And you'll swim and we'll pull and you'll swim and we'll pull. And maybe together we can make that work. Well, the one time that we did fly, it seemed like... Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know if he can pull all of us on the rope. Oh, I don't mean pull us all on the rope flying i mean he'll land with me on the hmm. other side and then we'll be on the we'll be earth walkers and huh. we'll drag <laughs> she's saying what would i on the strength of two child-sized creatures and a bird um, man it's gonna be great mm, to pull this is one, a flowing one child-sized creature i think he's talking about me too oh I it's okay i'm that. used to it um <laughs> do we have enough rope to do that I'm i don't just think just in the practicality do it's is. like half a, half a mile long we don't have the ability to pull someone i don't know i guess maybe i'm i guess confused. that's true right i don't have half a mile worth of rope yeah i mean way. yeah i really think we should go get that raft i mean i mean it's a, 
two hour walk, three hour walk back to Culpeper. Yeah, that's true too. And why, so why don't we just keep walking east um, to the shorter part of the river? Here, look on your well, map. We're trying to go the, northwest. The river, I know, but yeah, that's sometimes a good point. you got to go east to go north. Hold on, doesn't the river, does it? Does the river continue on into the forest once we get there? Yeah, it looks like it on the map. If you look, it's so, so there's part of the, the river that goes into the forest kind of, and then there's another part that kind of goes down south. Right, but once it hits the forest, does it become maybe a stream or something, something easier to cross? Maybe we just follow the river all the way to the forest? Shreya, that might be a question for Shreya, but also it looks like it's flowing away from the river, so it might be hard to swim in it towards that way. No, I'm not saying we swim. I just think we just follow along the coast, and then we can... Uh, that oh, may be the so we just cross idea. the smaller half and then just follow the other mm -hmm. one in. Yeah. I like right. that idea. Um, can we see, DM, can we see where the split is? Yeah, so if you guys had traveled north from Cold Crest Outpost, you guys would be right where uh, the two minor rivers come together to make the major river. And can we get a sense of how wide the smaller river is, like the first one that we'd have to cross? That's sort of lower Across. prong. Um, yeah, uh, two of you guys make a perception check for me. Surely. Who's going to be making Flynn? that? I will. Um, I don't know if I will. Hold on. I, I might first, first, ask first. Shreya <laughs> to kind of use his eagle eye and take a look. But I guess I was saying it. I'll do it. I was saying uh, I looked, so. Okay. Uh, it's still a plus four, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, 15. And that's a 16 for me. Cool. 15 is 16. Um, yeah, so you guys could see that um, this main river sort of begins as two smaller rivers. And the smaller one to the south, it uh, it looks, it doesn't look as wide. Um, and you can tell that as it is traveling um, more and more east, you can tell it gets a little bit smaller and smaller. It's not as wide. Um so it, it just depends on where you guys sort of want to want to meet it. Um, it does get a little bit smaller as it goes east. Um, probably, I don't know. I'll walk. I mean, even if we want to do some sort of uh, Tom Flurry to get across, uh, it'll be easier at a smaller yeah. portion Let's of it. Let's just go that way and take a look at it, I guess. Right. Down the banks of the river it is. Yep. Let's head east of it. And Sorry, Shry, I'm, I'm sure you're used to traveling faster than this. It's quite all right. It is an issue I've discovered with my elven friends as well. Though some of them, some of them are quite light of foot and can swim. But that is not the case with all beings. Yeah, I know. I have, I have a little leg span. I know. So as you guys travel east, the river does begin to get less and less wide, gets narrower and narrower. You guys travel for another about a half an hour before over one of the rolling hills, you begin to see um, uh, uh, not really uh, like a town or anything, but just uh, a couple of buildings laid out next to the river. Um, they look a little bit run down. It's just a couple of shacks that have been put together. You look out under the river, however, and you see... Um, rafts. You see several rafts, uh, five or six of them, that are like the size of a house, that have structures on top of them, and they're tied to the shore. You guys look, and as you're getting closer, you can see about half a dozen people moving on these rafts, and you can see they've got fishing equipment, and they're beginning to throw ropes and nets out into the river. It looks like these are fishermen out on rafts on the river. Um, as you guys approach, uh, they don't seem to notice you. They're just sort of doing their own work. And um, uh, that's what that's what you guys see as you're approaching. They're on the rafts? They're currently using them? Yeah, they're currently on these rafts. All right. Uh, Maybe they'll uh, let us borrow one or take us across. Right. Um, certainly, they, they might be... Willing to ferry I mean, us. Yeah, maybe they could ferry us, like especially yeah. if we gave them something. Yeah, I mean I've we could give them money, I guess. Um uh, Flynn, you seem harmless. Maybe it's best to you uh hey. approach them. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> I sort of look at the uh, the varied people in our group. Do I? I'll, I'll yeah. I'll walk. Uh, I'll kind of take the lead and stroll up. All right. Um, so as you walk up, um, one of the fishermen actually catches your eye. Um, looks uh, human and like a like a very old man. Looks um, very weathered and uh, just like a very old fisherman. And he's sort of hunched over and he's reeling in a line from that's leading out towards one of these rafts. And uh, he looks over and he waves at you, not sure if you're passing by or actually coming over to talk to him. Yeah, uh, when he notices me and starts waving, I'll start waving too. How close am I to him again? You're uh, still a couple hundred feet away. Okay. You're you're walking up, approaching. Yeah, I'll just wave, and then once I get within your shot, I'll just kind of wait to say something until then. I'll just like walk up, I'll get closer. Hello. Oh, good day. How are you? I'm. You know, I am just great. Um, I'm just out here doing 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 some cool stuff. Hey, uh, catch anything? Catch anything, uh, tasty yet? Unfortunately, today has been a little, uh, on the light side, but, uh, I'm hoping, uh, for, uh, some more luck later in the day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I hope so, too. You seem like a swell guy. Um, do you, uh, do you have any fish now? Did you catch anything or nothing so far? You're not even one little fish. Uh, oh, nothing yet today. Oh. I'm not, uh, not the, quite the fisherman that I used to be. Hey, don't say that. Uh, you'll, I'm sure you're great. Um, side note: um, we really need to get across the river, and I'm, we saw that you have like these raft things. They're super cool looking, and I was wondering: do you think you could possibly take us across just this small part of the river? That's all we really need. Oh, I. I'm sure I could uh, find some way for you to get across the river, but uh, unfortunately, I I don't have much say in what happens with the rafts out here. Um, but I could um, lend you a boat to get across. It's not much, but it might help. Well, um, normally I would say yes to that, but I think some of our my party members are um, boatophobic. Um <laughs> Or scared, or I don't know. It's it's been a weird day. <laughs> Let me ask, <laughs> and I'll, I'll run back to the group. <laughs> hey, how'd it go? I mean, he's super cool. He hasn't caught anything yet. Um, he thinks it's a pretty slow day for fishing, um, but he's hoping raft, that it'll kind raft. of. What, yeah, talk was about, oh, was right. Something about a raft. Sorry. Did yeah. Um, with this guy. He's sorry. Yep. Uh, the raft is he thinks he can take us across but I guess I'm a, from what I'm understanding is I think the raft will kind of just go down river it doesn't seem like he really has control over it at least that's what he was kind of saying he did say they need a boat and I know how we feel about boats but it how might how is a raft any different than a boat I think I, we just didn't want to be on the water but like yeah. whatever we clearly have to get across so yeah. we better get across we'll deal with it would it's love okay. to hear that story Marge, later you can hold my hand Oh, thank you so much, Alma. At least, you know, there's some comforting factor there. Let's go. If he is feeling a little bit of uh, lack in his own fishing ability, I would love to help him out in some way. Like that, it's been a while since I felt the thrill of uh, hunting the aquatic creatures. And my eyes sort of get big. Man, Shreya, I love the way you talk. All right, let's go. <laughs> And I'll head right, back so to the fisherman. As a group, you guys head back to uh, the fisherman, and um, he sees Flynn, and he waves again. And, oh, uh, are these your friends? Yeah, did you catch anything yet while I was gone? No, it was only like no? five minutes, so no, I hey, didn't. Hey, you, you never know, man. You never know. Least expect it. Least expect it. So, about that boat. How do we set that uh, up? Um, I have it over in my shack over there. Um, I don't have the strength to carry it, but it looks like a couple of your friends might, uh, have the strength to do that. Alma, Alma, um, looks at her muscles and she does like a flex. Um, because clearly <laughs> I'm the one who's strong. <laughs> Alma's got it. 
Right. We'll, we'll just let Alma take care of it on her own then. Alma, me and you, right? We got this? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Point, lead lead the way, Mr. Fisher uh, man. I just oh. shake my head at no one in particular. Like, I'm just like looking for a <laughs> yeah. sympathetic mind, and I, I just look at a bird and a giant lady, and I just kind of shake my head at an invisible third person. <laughs> I, I walk up Mark. next to him as we're as we're heading over, and I I bow and and in a, as muffled a tone as I can, or not muffled, but uh, just hushed. I I approach and say, Girl, "I hear you have a little bit of a fishing problem. I'd be happy to help you out in that affair if you'd like." No, uh, I'm uh, sure. Um. It's, it's mostly about patience, I've found, and in my old age, I've found lots of patience. But if you want to help, then you're more than welcome to. Oh, pure of earth. For me, patience has nothing to do with it. And I take off into the sky, and uh, I start scanning the river, and uh, start uh, hunting for some fish for this guy. Nice. Oh, I can fly. I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> um, as uh, he continues to lead you guys on towards um, his little shack that he's got set up, um, you can tell this is just like a real makeshift thing. It's probably been here for years. Um, just absolutely reeking with the smell of fish. Um, you can see there are fishing poles and nets and equipment leaned up outside the shack. And um, as he opens it up, you guys get that, just like that deep ocean fish smell um, that's just caked into everything here. He opens up the the shed door and you guys can see, you can hardly call it a boat. It's just a, like a little dinghy in there um, uh, that he's got. And he says, oh, I haven't used this in quite some time. Um but you're more than welcome to take it out for a spin, if you would like. Uh, I don't know how easily we'll be able to return this to you. Uh, do you think we could take it off your hands for a fair price? Oh, uh, sure, for a fair price. How much do boats go for these days? Uh, I bought this one back in the day for... About 50 gold pieces. It served mm. me for many years, and I, I, I would be able to part with it for, uh, I'll say, 35 gold. Could I Could I go wow. up to the boat and expect it and just, like, look for stuff that I can bring up to maybe drive the price down a little bit, like paint chips, broken parts? Yeah, yeah, make an investigation check. Okay. Would any of my background help with this? Make it advantage? Um, no, I don't think okay. so. Okay, no worries. You know what I'm talking about, though? Yeah. Okay. Oh, but it's still a real good roll, guy. Uh, <laughs> 19. So, like, I guess in looking for, like, things to use. Um, it's not pretty, but it will definitely get the job done. You don't see any, like, holes in the boat or anything. Um, it's it seems pretty sturdy, but, uh, yeah, the paint is definitely chipping off of it. Um, and, and there's a little bit of splintering in some areas. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll kind of... Uh... Mr. Fisher... What's your name, Mr. Fisherman? Oh, my name's James. James. Hey, it's great to meet James. Um, I really think that we could make some kind of deal here. Uh, you said 35, which I already know is super low. But I did notice that there's some paint chipping. I mean, you've had this thing for a very long time. Newer models have come out. Um, there's some stains, some splintering in the wood. This war has some kind of boat? like stain on it. it. Looks like fish guts. It <laughs> smells like fish guts too. I was wondering. I think that the highest that we probably could go is maybe twenty gold. I don't know if we can go any higher than that. I mean, here's the thing. This river is a beast. You know, it's so strong and powerful. And I just, I don't know. I mean. I, You've lived a whole lot longer than me, and so maybe you found better ways to 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 use this boat in your in your later years. But it seems to me like you're not going to get a whole lot of use out of it right now, or for the next time, foreseeable future. So you might as well have like twenty five gold in your pocket, yeah. buy yourself a nice re- gift or fish. 
Um, well, uh, Annette. Both of yeah. you guys make, uh, either both of you guys make a per, uh, persuasion check or one of you can do it with advantage. <laughs> um, I would like to do it if yeah, possible. I'll, um, let me see what mine persuasion. is. I might just give you um, advantage. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I am a, I, 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 my charisma is my spell modifier, so. I'll give you, <laughs> I'll give you advantage. Okay. <laughs> Lynn is not persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> that is 21. Uh, 21. Um, it would be nice to have some money to go buy fish when uh, I don't have that great of luck. Um, uh, I'll take 25. And he reaches his hand out. Um, yeah, I shake his hand. Um, while they're shaking hands, I'll pull out my, my, I'll switch my backpack over and kind of dig through it and then find a little pouch inside my backpack. Pull out 25 gold, close it up, close it up, put it in my back and walk over and just whenever they're done shaking hands, I'll hold my hand out. And I oh, say to him you. as I'm shaking his hand, like aggressively shaking it, and I say, oh, pleasure God. doing business. Oh, uh, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, James, I'm... wondering, um, could we also potentially throw in a fishing pole or two? Just because I did say 20 and we got we brought it up to 25. Maybe one fishing pole would be just so we can catch fish and, and maybe give them back to you when we come back. Well, I've got five here, um, and uh, I, I would prefer to keep three just in case because this is how sure. I live. Um, so I would be able to sell you two. Um, uh, we could say a uh, silver piece each seems fair. Sure, I'll, I'll definitely do that. That's totally fine. And I'll take my backpack off again, go in there, dig through that, over the pouch, get two silver, da 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 da, and I'll add it to the to the thing and just okay, okay. here you go, twenty five gold oh, and two you. silver. And I'll walk over to the fishing poles or where they're all at. Yeah. Can I look? Um, and yeah, dis- they're they're just leaned up against the edge of the shed. Can I discern which ones are the two best ones? <laughs> the two newer models, the ones so that are rude. cleaner. We paid for them. Newer model. Um, <laughs> yeah, make. A, what kind this of check? This is would livelihood. This, be? this is livelihood. Um, can I like, make a invest- survival <laughs> survival oh, check? Okay. Um, while he's doing that, DM. Yeah. Um, Oma would like to have clocked what he had in his pouch of of goodies. Um, just kind of how heavy it seemed. Cause she's got she's got some some change to, to toss around, um, and she was gonna have gonna buy the boat, but now she realizes that she's also traveling with some some high rollers. So, um, did did the pouch seem heavy? Did it seem like maybe his? Mm-hmm, did it seem like maybe his collector the co- the collective group sent him off with with some some good some good? Um, so I didn't take it out of my backpack. I just like I just went into my backpack and basically dug around and pulled out. Okay. So if you didn't want I everyone thought, to oh, see but... how much gold you've got, um, Flynn, you could make a sleight of hand check mm. if you want, just because as you're reaching in there, the coins are going to make a little sure. bit of noise. Um, so you can make a sleight of hand check against uh, Olma's perception. Um, just before I forget um, and roll again, I rolled an 18, so oh, plus yeah. four for my sleight of hand. Or no, you said survival, plus four. Yeah. Uh, so 22 for their survival check on the rods. But I'll roll a, would you say, a sleight of hand? Yeah, to, to see if you could hide you know, um, how much gold. I wasn't got. hiding it, so she oh, can okay. hear what she hears. So I don't know what she hears. Okay, yeah. Um, what was that perception check, Oma? 15. Uh, 15. There is, uh, this was not a majority of his gold. Um, that's sort of the sense that you get. Wow. Is when he was when he was picking this, this out, this... Um, there was still quite a bit left. Okay, okay. So um, Oma, Oma clocks that. She's she's okay. Oh, what are you planning? <laughs> I don't plan um, anything. I, just, <laughs> I like to know things. I like to be. I like to have. I like to have an understanding. Um, yeah. So I'm over yeah. looking at the fishing poles. Looking at the fishing poles. Um, there are three of them that are definitely in better condition. Two of them are like have definitely seen better days. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, yeah, you discern which two are the the best ones. I'll take one of the nice ones and one of the okay ones. Okay. And he doesn't, he doesn't even look at you, uh, uh, taking those. So you can, yeah, I'll take one nice one and I'll be like, Oh, I don't want to take two. I'll take one of the other and I'll just put them together, put them on the boat. And, um, 
Uh, can I ask why uh, you are all trying to cross the river here? Yeah. Um, our friend Shreya over here has some problems uh, in his village. We're, and no, we're uh, yeah, we're just a couple of, we're just uh, some traveling. Right. Uh, uh, we're a band of uh, friends who are just uh, on a journey, just uh, uh, sightseeing. We heard there's uh, some beautiful uh foliage in uh in the nearby forest and right. so um, I really do love trees. Also, I love boats. Oh, oh that's oh, great. You guys are going up into the forest. That's right. Oh, uh, that's very good for you. You must all be very brave. I I would not uh, go there myself as I don't know uh, uh, how to live off of the land like that. That's a skill I haven't been able to acquire, but the the forest has uh, served me pretty well. Um, the forest uh, brings down uh, nutrients through the river and uh, nourishes the fish uh, down here, so it's all sort of this this little ecosystem down here that we get uh, we get nutrients and and uh, the good energies from the forest that flow down here and uh, <laughs> replenish replenish the fish. You say you don't live off the land, but you seem to understand it very well. I understand the river, not the forest. What uh, uh what strikes such fear in you about the forest? I mean, we we heard it was just a nice place to. Take a look. Um, the fact that there's not other people there, um, the fact that there's uh, no beds or uh, pillows, <laughs> um, the fact that there's no walls or uh, ceilings, um, and the fact that I can't uh, purchase food or purchase water um, or defend myself from wild animals. Uh, would you like me to keep going? Or, or? We're, we're not going to live That's there, mister. We're just going to We're to taking explore. family portraits. We're just taking family portraits. It's fine. Everything's good. Uh, uh, you know, Shreya, our friend, yes, uh, is, is hunting for us. So there you go. Flynn here is something of an artist. So when she says taking family portraits, what she means is uh, he's going to draw. Uh, I'm real good. Oh. In front of the... Uh, would you like me to draw your portrait? Oh yes, I was oh. just—I was just gonna God. ask. Damn of it, course, <laughs> definitely. And I'll set my bag down again. Pull out a little notebook <laughs> that I have, uh, my little journal that I have, and I'll flip to the back where there's like—I'll just rip out a piece. I'll put the piece of paper on top. Sit in, sit in the boat. <laughs> okay, and he just sort of waddles over to the boat, and yes. he's got a just like he he takes his hands and he grabs his leg and he picks up his leg and he puts it over the side of the boat and he puts it into the boat and then he does the same thing Do you with need his help? other leg he's got it oh i've got it i'm good and he sits uh, down into the don't boat let him pull anything i'll uh, i'll walk over today. and i'll hand him uh one of the fishing rods that i i'll hand him the nicer one so it looks good because <laughs> i'm gonna be able to draw oh. it and i'm like okay pretend like you're fishing and he well, he takes it and he he stands there. He's got the fishing rod in front of him, pretending like he's fishing. How's the? Does this look okay? It looks great. Now look off in the distance, like you're really concentrating, trying to find that fish. Oh, I'm gonna get that fish. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And I start <laughs> sketching. You're doing great. How long do I have to stand here? Shh, 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 shh. You're doing great. I have arthritis and I can't sit for too long. <laughs> I, t- I turned to Marge and I'm like, oh, I didn't think he was going to, I just, I, I don't, I, I can't be held responsible for this. That's all I want to say. I'm holding you solely responsible for this. I really would Jeez. like to try to I do mean, this well. I mean, Marge, you did t- bring up the portraits first. It's kind of, I just, how much have I told you to just let me do the talking? You know, like, uh, I, I just... <laughs> I should probably listen to the child more. I reach into my my bag to pull out just some some basic uh, some balms some some um, sort of uh, rubs basically for any sort of muscle strain or any sort of uh, damage this poor man inflicts on himself by <laughs> pausing for this. <laughs> you got anything to make him go to sleep? Just you know, forget we were ever here. There are certain roots you can put into tea. Uh, I could uh, boil up. But I don't know that that would be necessary. 
How does it look? Am I, am I doing okay? You can do it, man. Just hold out. You're doing great. You look I'm strong. I'm envisioning the fish in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I what kind of fish are you envisioning? I can see myself catching the fish. Oh, it's, a, it's a big fish. Big fish. Biggest Got one it. I've ever caught. <laughs> While all this is going on, can we clarify that Shreya is, in fact, still hunting? <laughs> yeah. Um, Shreya, you've been out there uh, trying to catch some fish. Um, are you are you actually, like, going down and trying to catch oh, yeah. food? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make good on my promise to this guy. <laughs> Nice. nice. Okay. Um, make a survival check to see if you can actually uh, catch All some right. of these fish. And how are you? How are you attempting to do it without a fishing? Uh, so, combination of spearing them with my talons, like going in when they're right about to break the water, uh, and then, uh, or if I miss them with my talons, then scooping them up with with my beak, and each one that I catch, uh, I end up throwing uh, somewhere on the shore. It, I don't know. Are, are there any like rocky areas of the shore at all, or is it just muddy? Yeah, um, yeah. The the shore the shore um, it's got some areas that are like more mud and sand, but there are definitely patches where it's literally yeah. Rocks. So that's I, I that's where I, I'm sort of like piling my kill uh, among the among the rocks there. You said survival check, right? Yes, okay. a survival check. Uh, that is a 22, dirty 22. Uh, 22, nice. nice. Um, you, after swooping down a couple times, you are able to catch three decent-sized fish. Um, this will be enough rations for you for probably a couple days. Okay. Great. Uh, so I'm going to take my kill one by one, and I don't know at what point... <laughs> in the process of this sketch is happening, but I'm gonna sort of pile two <laughs> of these fish at the at the foot of the of the fisherman. At I, I don't know when this would play out in the process of him being sketched, but are you are you dropping them yes. from overhead? <laughs> oh god. Just don't drip them onto the to the drop. So we're we're in the shack right now, right? Be conscientious. Oh, I thought- um, and you guys have you guys have dragged the boat outside of the shack at this point. Oh, okay. He's sitting he's sitting outside on the boat, and he as he's sitting there, he's got his fishing rod in hand. He begins to close his eyes a little bit, and he he says back what Flynn told him, and he says, "Envision the fish, yeah. envision catching the fish." Yeah. And this fish thuds at his feet, and he goes, "Oh, oh, you did it! <laughs> what what have I done? You caught a fish." It's all mindset, oh. man. All mindset. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and he lets go of the fishing rod and he looks down at his hands. And he goes, "What am I?" <laughs> A fisherman. Can I just yeah. l- loudly go you're a human, James. Remember our bird friend? He's up there flying around. Ugh. Keep keep oh. posing. Keep Marge. posing. You're doing great. Where's your oh. spirit of generosity? Come on. What are you that doing? Makes, that makes much more sense. <laughs> uh, You're going to kill well, them out of a broken heart? Jeez. That's kind of disappointing. Don't know if I'm going to do that. But uh, who wants to, I don't know, cross the river? You're right. And done. All right. Um, try it. Do you want to help him out of the boat? It seems like he had trouble getting into it. Uh, sure. I wouldn't mind at all doing doing that with this with this one. And I sort of awkwardly uh, fumble my wingspan back into place and attempt to steady this uh, old man on his way out out of the boat. I, I'm not used to being in a boat. <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> You sort of take him and, and and you help him out of the boat, and he lands one foot after the other. Um, uh, how did the drawing turn out? I think it looks perfect. It really accents, you know, your stature, the strength, that determination to catch that fish. And I mean, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, do you? I wanted to try and do really well. Do you want me to? Yeah. Roll? So make <laughs> make a uh, make a sleight of hand check. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> This may be a thing that I do now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I got a natural 20! <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah! 
Natural 20. So uh, 24 total. Nice. He looks at this drawing and he he doesn't say anything at first. And you there's a second of like, oh my God, does he hate it? And then you look over at him and a couple tears begin to form in his eyes. And one one tear falls down his face and he looks at you and he goes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Glad I could help, man. Well, uh, shall we be on our way then? I think so. James, uh, you stay safe out here, yeah? I will. Um, uh, give me one second. And he hobbles back over to his shed. And uh, you can hear sort of some rummaging around. And uh, he comes back out and um, he presents you guys with a couple of oars, uh, like rowing oars for the boat itself. And Mm -hmm. uh, he also comes out with his um, little pouch of gold that he collected from Flynn. And he begins picking out the gold that... uh, that Flynn had gave him and, and attempts to try and give it back to Flynn. And he says, uh, I have, the drawing is payment enough. Um, you can, you can have this back. It's okay, sir. We paid. And it no, is... I, I, I insist. Well, at least let me pay you for the fishing poles. Are you sure? Yeah, you can give, and just to let me know, he's giving me back all of the money. He's attempting to. Yeah. Okay, I'll take, um, yeah, so I'll take back the, the, the money and I'll just pull out four gold. But I'll pull out five gold and I'll, I'll give him that. This is this is for the fishing poles. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you like the painting, but I, I feel like I still need to pay you for something. So here's five gold for the fishing poles. Man, I hope we see you again. We'll have to come back this way and maybe get you another pa- uh, another portrait paint, painted, uh, drawn. Oh, I would appreciate that. Um, and if I could bring back my grandchildren, um, I'm sure they would love to get their portrait drawn as well. James, where do you live? (laughs) I live over in Addersfeld. No way! We're gonna be heading that way. Maybe we'll see you there. Oh, yes. Uh, that would be amazing if if we come across each other. Um, I'm sure the grandchildren would love a, a drawing. Well, I'd love to meet them. Um, uh, what we'll part look of Mattersfeld are you from? What part uh, do, you, do you live in? I live in the Market District. Um, right. We've got, uh, uh, well, obviously a fishing, uh, a fish stand there, um, and uh, you can come find me there if you're uh, if you're around. Oh, definitely. Whenever we go there, no, we'll have to look and see if you got any fish we can buy. I would love that. All right, so are we all ready? Try, are you done, uh, you done yeah. fishing? I've got my fix in for the day. All right, um, let's load up, and I'll, I'm going to make sure we have all our stuff. So I'll make sure, are we taking those fish, or I'll, I'll make sure the two fishing poles are on the boat and all that stuff. I'll just start getting ready, essentially. Are we, two, are we leaving any fish for him? Are we leaving any fish for him? I left I, uh, I would. two fish at his feet, and then I, I kept one. All right. Got Good. it. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, so you guys are able to uh, all drag this boat out to the edge of the water. You guys find sort of a sandy area where it's easy to push the boat out into the water. Um, now that you guys uh, have the oars that he gave you um, after... The, the beautiful drawing was given to him. Um, the uh, the difficulty of crossing this river is going to be decreased uh, nice. by quite a bit because you guys are going to be able to sort of steer a little bit better and actually get some power into it. Um, so with that, I'm going to need two people to sort of be helming um, the rowing and taking you guys across the river. I votes for March and Shreya. What do you guys think? I'm good with that. Sh- Shreya, are you... Uh... Are you a strong bird? Oh, I am quite agile. Early bird. Unfortunately, my strength is uh, no. very dependent on forces outside of my control, like momentum and wind. Right. I mean, I'm stringy, uh, but I uh, have done a lot of manual labor, uh, so I am able to also helmet, depending yeah. on. How about this? Uh, if you know, the if the boat the starts to come into trouble, I can. 
remain above and spot the boat, try to swoop down and steer it in, in a better direction. <clears throat> All right. That's a fair deal. I like it. Let's go. Okay. Um, so you guys actually all hop in. Uh, you guys push the boat out onto the water and are immediately are uh, swept away by the current of this river. Um, it's a little bit jolting at first, but after a couple seconds, you guys are able to get the oars in the water and actually begin to uh, steer yourselves. So, um, I'm sorry, March is taking one of the oars. Who's taking the other one? Kelly. Kelly. Okay. Kelly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, both of you guys, I'm going to need both of you guys to make... Um, athletics checks for me to see if you guys can uh, uh, hold the oars against the current of the river. You got this, guys. The 17. Okay. Nice. 19. Thelma's like reaching her hand across, on, um, off of the boat, like dragging it across the water as we... Nice. As we go. Nice. So um, the first uh, portion of the river that you guys are getting across, it's easy. You guys are rowing perfectly fine. You guys are finding each little current um, to take you guys further and further across the river. Um, you guys are going to make have to make two more checks in order to successfully get across the river. Um, with that, uh, you guys run up into a, a little bit of a trickier patch of the river where there's a little bit more uh, turbulence. So I'm going to have you guys both make another athletics check. And DM, uh, I'm going to do, as I'm above the boat, uh, kind of treading air, uh, I'm going to look over at the place where we're headed on the other, like the river bank, and just take a look and see if there's anything awaiting us on the other side. Yeah. Right. Uh, make a perception check for me. What were those two uh, two checks? That's a nine for me. 17. Uh, 17. Um, so you guys begin to rotate just a little bit uh, with Kellex, uh side sort of falling behind and, and March really digging oh. in and, and propelling her side forward. Um, you guys begin to rotate a little bit, but sort of still stay on course. Um, and you guys are, are able to stay fine. Uh, uh, Shreya, was what was that perception my... check? Uh, 14. So you can see on the other side of the river, um, it seems to be pretty clear. Uh, it is um, sort of uh, rough waters ahead Ooh. for them, um, but you can see on the bank, there's there's nothing Great. out there right now. So uh, with that, you guys are hitting another rough patch of water. I'm going to need you guys to make one last athletics check to see if you can uh, keep the boat going. It's a 16 for me. A 16 for Kellick. Hey. 20. And a 20. Nice. So you guys are able to navigate these waters no problem. Um, nice. On some of the parts where it's a little bit more difficult, you sort of dig in and, and muscle it through a little bit better. Um, but but before you know it, you're, the boat hits the, uh, the bank on the opposite side, and uh, you guys are successfully across the river without any problems whatsoever. Good job, guys. Um, are we tying this up? Like, how, how are we going to... I sort of tap my oar against Marge's oar. Um, yeah, what time What time is it, uh, roughly? Like, what, what t does it seem, you know, what, what time of day are we? You guys are approaching about 2 o'clock. Um, after you guys left the tent and walked for a little bit, it's approaching the afternoon. Okay, um, I want to turn... Uh, Shreya? How deep... Into the forest is your your um commune uh, because it's gonna start getting dark and then in a f fairly soon and in a forest it's gonna be even more dark. So I guess like would we be able to get there before the end of the night? Do you think? Uh, before nightfall. Do I have a sense of that, DM? Um, you know, once you actually get to the edge of the forest, um, it's a, it's a couple miles in, but definitely within a day's travel. It may take us a little bit of time into the night to actually find the, the gathering of the elves. The good thing is that they have, they've kept, 
uh, elven wards of light uh, etched into certain trees that I can identify, and the larger the concentration of those wards, it means the closer we're getting to the center of, of the commune. In, let's just let's just do it then, huh? Is the village safe for us to go to? I know that there's problems. Um, once we get to the village, are we going to have refuge there, or is is it going to be dangerous? <laughs> I sort of chuckle to myself a little bit. I I wish I could tell you that. All right. Well, that that's, sounds that seems really helpful. Start going across the, the water. What are we doing with this boat, guys? Perhaps we should tie it along the shoreline and try and hide it as much as possible. Could be used to us at some point. Maybe you could tuck it in that bag of yours. Seems kind of a large uh, piece of fabric. Are there? Are there like? Fo- is there foliage around the river bank at all? Um, there is, uh, it's mostly like a continuation of the fields on the previous, uh, side. Uh-huh. There are just a smattering of bushes here and there, um, but nothing super dense. Well, let's, um, I mean, there's nothing much, but it, it's better to put it up against those bushes over there, I guess. We can just put it over there and leave it and hopefully nobody takes it. I mean, I'm kind of worried that someone's going to take our boat that we paid, paid for. Paid five whole gold that you paid for, barely, barely that you paid had to- for it. You had to draw beautiful, beautiful portraits. Hey. Sorry about that. Not that we great. shouldn't value your talent. I mean, clearly, you've, you've missed your calling. I'm an artist. I'm, I'm going to look at the map. I'm going to change again, everything. Because it looks like there's one more leg of river that we have to cross before we get into the forest proper. Yeah, I mean, that's a... that's a We could do... We could cross the other river if you guys want to. But I thought the plan originally was just we're going to follow the southern side of that other river into the into the oh that's forest. right where within the forest is I mean I know you can't you can't really say uh, exactly but uh, is there specific all right that's where we're going <laughs> here Shri if you want to point it out so yeah map, why don't we cross the river then since we have such a nice boat the real right. question is how uh, I think it's a good idea how difficult will it be to carry this boat overland to the other section of the river well how far is it can we see it. DM. Yeah, um, it looks fairly to, close to me, but I, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it uh, it actually is. It's it's probably no more than a mile away. So we could potentially drag it for a mile. Yeah, I don't. It uh, wouldn't be sure. too difficult to do it. I've done harder things, so let's go for it. Let's yeah, it. I'll get behind and I'll start pushing. Yeah, if same. I'll get up. Pull. I'll get up right next to on the other side of. Oh man, I'll just push the other side of it too. Um, March, okay. March is just gonna go, just kind of go, go straight up to the front and just full on, one handedly, just kind of shift, shift it up, pull it up, and start dragging while <laughs> shimming all of her weapons. Sort of. So on, along on her one back. side of us, we have one sort of tree line, right, and and then we're pushing slash pulling this boat. Uh, over to that, uh, to the other section of the river, and then yes. there's just a sea of forest in front of us. Is that right? That is correct. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna hover uh, like 15 feet or so above, just because they're, they seem to be a little bit compromised in, in just pushing the boat forward. So I'm gonna be, uh, just kind of scanning the area they're headed and around us as I sort of circle overhead. Okay. I imagine um, I'm at the front of it, kind of pulling from the front. Yeah, for sure. As you guys move closer and closer to the edge of this forest, you look out and Flynn and Shreya, this is a familiar feeling to you guys. You guys have have felt this in the last couple days. But as you look out into the forest, you just get chills and sort of an uneasy feeling within the pit of your stomach. Mm. Um, It's nothing that, that would, you know, outright deter you from approaching the forest, but it just, there's something that feels sort of unnatural um, as you guys approach the forest. But and we've, over the we've next couple minutes, field. you guys are able to uh, drag the boat to the edge of the other river. Now, as you oh. guys approach the edge of the other river, you guys sort of uh, bring the bring the boat up and, and push it. And as you're about to push it into the water, you all notice that the river is flowing in the opposite direction. It's not oh. flowing 
out towards Cold Crest and then out towards the ocean. It's flowing in towards the Shadow Timberland, uh, which is not the direction that it should be flowing. It should be flowing, you know, out towards the major body of water. This one is Seems- not. It is in the complete opposite direction. Seems legit. Hold on, guys. This seems this seems off. Um, can I look at like down to the west of the river? Does it look like anything? I kind of want to get a sense that this is like natural, or if this is like a magical thing, push like changing the trajectory of the water. You look down the river to the west. Um, you don't see anything unnatural. It's um, there's just a, a a little bit of river that goes on, and then it's mostly rolling hills from there. You don't is see any like structures a, or anything. Can we sort of pinpoint where the change starts? Where there's where like the river sort of shifts flow? Is that a, a section? Is there like a hair part <laughs> of where the river <laughs> um, shifts? Make a perception check for me. Uh, it's a ten. Uh, ten. You can't. You can't really see. You're looking out. Um, a lot of the there is sort of like some, um, not like waves, but just sort of some of the water is churning, just like in a normal river. So you can't really get a sense of of where that directional change actually is. That's wow. so weird. Didn't James say that the nutrients were coming from the forest to feed the fish? I mean. It doesn't really seem like that can happen if the water's going the wrong direction. Yeah, Shreya, uh, do you know anything shake. about this? Do you know this river? You live around here. Does it flow into the... Does it normally flow into the forest? The last time I would have encountered this, would it have been different? Um, the last time that you would have encountered this, uh, it would have been flowing in the normal direction out towards the ocean. Hmm. No, this is strange. I have no idea why the river might be behaving this way. I sort of shake my my hand out because I've got kind of a tingle in my arm from all this <laughs> proximity uh, to water. And I uh, I say, um, well, it could be it, that could be the reason why he can't catch any fish. I mean, well, I guess Shreya was able to, but if there's there's less, I don't know, nutrients. I'm unfamiliar with how that would work in the first place. But if he's relying on that, then it might be hurting the ecosystem of the, the river there. Yeah. And whatever well, it is, it's maybe unnatural, once we... and I don't trust it. Yeah. On the other hand, it would probably make our travel a lot faster, and we'd probably get there way before, well before nightfall. What do you guys Assuming think? Should the we... river flows straight to try his village and not... Kind? Uh, yeah, from where he pointed it out, it, it looks like it's going right to it, so... Group boat. Who wants to jump in the river with the boat and use it to travel down the river, up the river, or who wants to just cross and walk it? I'm going to cross and walk that. It's probably safer to take the boat. I mean, if you just think of it as time, uh, if the forest is dangerous on its own, then the time spent in the forest is shortened by a faster travel, a faster trip. All good points. Um, I think we should use... the wrong way. I mean... We can use it to our advantage. There's, We've been in worse situations, you know? I wouldn't mind giving my wings a break. Yes, yes. Does the water look more rapid than the last? Does it look like it's it's super treacherous, or does it look like the last um, river we crossed? Does it look just about the same type of flow? It looks just about the same. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I say we give it a shot. Worst case scenario, we just get out and... Go on the land. Yeah. If it starts looking dangerous, we just go to the side and that's, you know, all we've got. But I think it's worth trying. I agree. Let's do it. All right, let's pile in. All right. Just just to give March's thoughts a fair chance here, I mean, could this force that's haunting your village be inviting us by putting this uh, flow into the river? Is it some sort of shadow nefarious trap of sorts? If the shadow has infected the the forest, then it would appear that my brethren might be in need. And if it takes us faster to where that need arises, then I would hope to get there as quickly as possible. Can't argue with that. 
Let's get going. Let's, go. Let's do this. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll help to load the boat out into the, the water and stable it, stabilize it so everyone can get in. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, you're able to, once again, launch the boat back into the water. Uh, but this time you guys aren't... Uh, are you guys crossing the river or are you guys taking the river in? Taking we're taking it, it in. Yeah, we're taking just going in. in. Gotcha. Okay. Just want to make that clear. So um, this time, since you guys aren't aren't crossing the river, the uh, the checks are going to be a little bit easier. This is just sort of to to keep the boat from tipping. Mm -hmm. um, so as you guys are now floating along this river, um, taking it down. Yes? I just wanted to say, Shia, keep an eye out for those glowing trees so we know when to stop. Yeah, wh whenever we need to get out. Like wherever you're going. Yes, the the wards of light will reveal themselves. I I should be able to pick them out rather easily. Great. Cool. We Are don't they, want to take this too far. Elvish wards. Is there something special that makes you able to see them? Because if if not, then I I can read Elvish. I, I can help you. It's just my own experience with the commune and and the way that they mark the trees. It Understood. It just looks like something that stands out from the forest, and unless there are other inhabitants here that are organized that I don't know a thing about. Oh, that inspires confidence. Uh, that's cool. Onward! <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I point. Um, so <laughs> as you guys, as you guys are uh, uh, flowing down this river, um, you guys actually make it to the entrance of the forest, uh, where the tree line actually starts. Hmm. Um, it's a pretty abrupt start. Um, it's all—it's a little bit unusual, where the trees sort of just come up to. It's—it's it's dense, dense forest until all of a sudden there's no trees. But you guys sort of cross that threshold, past the tree line, and then all of a sudden you guys are in a dense forest. The trees come up right up to the edges of the hmm. river. And do the, do um, the branches like arc over it? Is it is it the like a, yes, a the, spooky yeah, archway? That's cool. It is. It is definitely. Um, the uh, the river is still pretty wide here, so it doesn't completely cover the the river. But there are um, tree branches that uh, reach out almost like hands and arms over Ooh. the river. Um, you guys, can I do yes. a spooky vibe check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to do a, spo you want to yeah, do a spooky vibe check? Yeah, I'm going to do one of them. Spooky vibe check. Spooky vibe. vibes. This river <laughs> yeah. definitely warrants it. <laughs> so, These um, for, for spooky vibes checks, um, <laughs> uh, it's just a, uh, a roll in a d20 and then adding your wisdom modifier. Oh, great. Um, That's going to be great. To see if there's any sort of like spooky things that it's it's not <laughs> quite a perception. It's more like the hair is standing up on the back of your sure. neck. Sure. So just a straight wisdom check, essentially? Wisdom? Yeah, just a straight okay. wisdom check. It's a spooky vibes check. Spooky vibes! It's a spooky vibes uh, check. I got a 15 on my spooky vibes. Uh, you're looking around. You are detecting some serious spooky uh, vibes. Oh, <laughs> shit! Uh, Guys. <laughs> oh. The question will become, are spooky vibes checks always successful? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um... Yeah, you're you're getting some some sort of <laughs> ominous presence around you. Um, there's sort of a breeze flowing through this these trees, and you can see the branches that are hanging out over the water. They look like arms and hands Ugh. reaching out, oh, like these, no. these no. long Turn it around. these long fingers <laughs> that are sort of reaching out over the water. Oh um, God! If this is a spider, I will lose my mind. <laughs> it, and and it continues along the river for for the length that you guys are going. Um, and looking around, you just you can't shake these chills and uh, this spooky vibe uh, that you're. I getting. have a quick question. I'm gonna. Uh, these, have I have I encountered yeah. these spooky vibes before in my time here previously? <laughs> <laughs> or are they like very strong? Or yes, this is. Um, it's actually not as strong as it was when you were in the, the <laughs> commune itself. Um, but you're just starting to get sort of that tingling feeling. Uh, and then I'm, I'm just going to I'm you. just gonna say, mm, yes, just like how we left it. And then I'm sort of going to like burrow my head into my feathers. If you all don't mind, I, I can't imagine that we'll be there imminently. I'm going to try to nod off a bit. The feeling of the waves rocking this boat is is very, very comforting to me. I'm gonna 
I'm sorry, you're gonna go to sleep right now? Is that what you just said? In so I many words, it seems like. And I'm, I'm, I and then I said. I'm like, a, I'm just gonna start translating everything <laughs> you say because I just am trying to make sure I get it because, like, you use so and, many words. And with words. that, my. And I use a lot of words, but my words are very small. <laughs> That's like his, part of his charm, though, right? And with that, my head kind of like falls over <laughs> to the side of my of my wings. I'm going to. I mean, you you you're called DM, but uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can try to eke out a short rest here. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see if you're uh, you're able to get. That um, you're going to wake up in like two rest. minutes. <laughs> With, with the spooky vibes, could I, after that check, could I, like, actively just, like, be looking in these trees on either side of the river, just constantly keeping an eye out while my party members are rowing through the um, river? I'll just keep an eye, like, left and right, just keep an eye out yeah. for anything creepy. Make a perception creepy. check for me. Sure. Uh, Is it pretty dark? Um. Yeah, so as you guys are flowing down this river, you all start to notice that um, it's getting dark a lot quicker than the, than the normal daytime would uh, constitute. Okay, I would like to light a torch then. I was okay. going to also do a thing with that, so as she's doing that, I'll um, uh, I'll whisper, uh, just a uh, Valkeeper, show us a, a little bit more than we can gather with our feeble eyes and I'll cast um, light on the ore that I'm using uh, okay. and I'll say Ostende Nobis and um, the ore shows with uh, 20 feet of bright light and then 20 feet of dim light beyond that nice <gasps> wow nice I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look over and be like what about my what about, what about my ore about you, uh, just, just you you just get the fancy light the rest of us just no okay thank yeah, you some yeah. of us are blessed I suppose I can do something like that. I can do it. I can. I can. I can do something like that. And I. Um, oh, I... But maybe not. Oh no. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Here um, we go. No, I Here just double. I just double the bright light that's caught, cast from my um, torch, so that it, it doubles the light that comes from it. Nice. Um, and it's gonna last for an hour. I also change its color to um, like a bright green. Great. Okay. S- super spooky. The, uh, the, the, light, uh, <laughs> uh, the light from my aura. Oh no, no. I'm sorry. Your your thing is like more of a yellow because it's like light. It's a, so it's a it's like a pale it's a pale white light. It's not. Okay. I uh, changed mine to match yours. All right. <laughs> That's better. I, I we we nice. could go we go kind of go back and forth like no I mean I can do <laughs> yours if you want I, I don't mind. Uh, you have preference on the color? No, just, no, it's fine. Let's go. No, 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 just, it's cool. We can I do think this, this is kind of the thing for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this color makes so much more sense. Green doesn't really give that much light. I just like to the. Sometimes I just like to make them fun colors, um, and so it's it's now doubled the light, and it's the same shade as. I kind of just Calix. leave it to the you know to the the source of it, and. What? Go from there. The oh, source from, of what? <laughs> oh, like my m- magic comes from. Something beyond me, you know, uh, right. something outside of my myself. So I let right. sort of let him decide. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, as we're rowing, can, does the light reveal anything? Um, can we sort of see like how deep it is, or how murky the water is, or if there's any life, aquatic life around it? Does that um, help my perception check? Yeah. yeah. So you're. You, uh, how about uh, Flynn and Kellick both do perception checks as uh, Flynn's looking out into the more of the forest, right? Yeah. And then Kellick is looking down into the water. So I already rolled. Do you want me to roll again? Is oh, gonna... no, no, no. This is this was sure. that roll. So okay. what was that? Um, just so added my to roll, it. yeah, my roll was a 14. A 14? My roll mm-hmm. is a critical fail. A critical no. fail. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, Flynn, you're looking out into the forest and... Um, you don't notice anything. The The trees are sort of moving in, in, in an eerie way, but nothing that's like coming at you, coming towards cool. you. Um, every once in a while, you'll think that you'll see something, but it was just a shadow uh. that was moving over one of the trees. <sighs> Kelly, okay. you, uh, you uh, hold your oar out over the water and are, are attempting to sort of look in and see where the bottom of this river is. Um, you're looking in and, and you can't really see too deep into the water and you lean closer and closer to try and try and see it. 
and you don't notice a shift in the water beneath you. (gasps) You don't notice the water begin to form until it forms into a beautiful face. Don't do this. A beautiful face that sort of matches your own as you are looking close... That uh, as as you're looking in close to the surface <laughs> of the water, it sort of smooths out until the features of a face form. And not long after you notice it, a tentacle <gasps> of water no. bursts forth from the river and attempts to hit you. Um, we are going to roll initiative. Oh my god! Um, with no. this, no. as something in the water is attempting to attack Caleb. No, and I rolled a two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the thing I can roll? I got a six. And Shreya is a six. I mean, how, how long? <laughs> yeah. is that? He's about to wake up. <laughs> well. Probably you missed yeah. one round, probably. My goal was to try to recover a spell slot, we have, but we, we'll have to see. Wait. we have to wait until, I guess we have to wait. Yeah. Hey, it's worth trying, man. It's um, a good effort. If, if you want to keep resting, I mean, that the is question is, can I? If this the might wake him up. His tentacles just <laughs> burst through the water. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me uh, get this. Okay, um, has everyone... Initiative dance? Yeah, the initiative dance. Um, has everyone rolled initiative? Yes, sir. Yep. Perfect. Um, Olma, what's your initiative? 13. Uh, Flynn, what's your initiative? Six. Eleven. Shreya. All right. Um, March. What is your initiative? Twelve. And Kellek. Uh, twelve as well. Twelve as well. Uh, who wants to go first, March or Kellek? Uh, you can go, March. It's all the same. So this thing, uh, a, a tentacle made of water, um, bursts from the edge of the boat and attempts to uh, strike out at Kellick. So it is going to make an attack roll towards him as you're completely caught off guard by this. Thing. That is going to be a 21 to hit. Oh. That definitely hits. Okay. Uh-oh. That'll do it. Hopefully that he doesn't, like, pull be, him under. That is going to be six points of bludgeoning damage as uh, this tentacle oh. bur- uh, bursts up and just hits you in the face with a force of water. That level one HP, man. I know. <laughs> That's yeah. rough. Serious. That's rough. Okay. Um, and then the tentacle is going to uh, retract back into the water and... Uh, yeah, uh, so just retract its arm. Next up on the initiative is Olma. Olma, you see uh, Kalik uh, be thrown back by this attack. Um, and we're all on a boat. And you're all on a boat. Um, I can, I'm gonna yell, Kalik, and then I'm gonna, I guess, walk until I can, like I want to look. I guess I'll look over the side of the boat. Can I see a face? At all, or uh, do I see what attacked him? Make a perception check. Uh, 15. Uh, 15, yes. So there is a little patch of the water that uh, doesn't seem to be flowing with the the current uh, around it. Okay. Mm. Um, okay, water. Water demon of some kind. <laughs> um, my guess is fire does nothing to it. So <laughs> I don't know. That's a that's a interesting thought. <laughs> I don't know where you're getting that idea, but uh, oh, you know. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna freak out and um, throw my hands up. And when I I'm, when I yell Kellick and watch out, um, you see once again the warbling ball of energy um, come from me. 
going towards that face or that piece of that piece of water that's not moving in the same direction. Okay, uh, make an attack roll. Get him. Actually, really good. Um, twenty-one. Yeah, twenty-one hits for sure. Yes. Roll your damage. Oh man, that was almost fire damage. Um. <laughs> um okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, not a lot. Um, eight points of force damage. Eight points of force. So damage. it it warbles and warbles and warbles and warbles and turns. Like silver. Nice. Um, at the end, as it's changing and rotating through colors, and it becomes kind of this silver mass that um, hits the piece of water. Okay, nice. Um, and as it hits, you can see um, th- where the force hit the creature. It sort of dispersed a little bit, and then came back and formed oh, no. back together into this into this uh, uh, form. You Did can't really tell exactly what it is. Did it seem to do anything to it? It definitely did. Okay. Um, it just seemed to disperse it for a moment before it formed Reformed. back together. Okay, and that was a spell slot. Okay, so I'm going to have you roll your wild magic surge. Uh-oh. <gasps> Uh-oh. Guys. It's no. either a one or a two. Here we go. Is oh, that a one? no. That is a no. one. Here oh, my we God. Go. <laughs> oh, my God. This Guys, is okay. so early. This is so, so early. Oh, no. Oh, so, boy. Something is going to happen. Um, I'm going to roll a D100. And I've got this great little table in front of me that's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen. So um, if you would all just give me a second, I'm going to roll that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Level one. Have it so bad. I feel like I should honestly crack open a beer right now. (laughs) We might need to after this. We might all die. Yeah. (laughs) Guys, we'll be fine. It'll be great. We'll be fine. <laughs> we're, it's gonna. Tr- it's gonna introduce, like introduce new characters next episode. And they right. were never heard from. It's gonna make again. like fireworks or immediately teleport us to the village. I'm sure it'll be great. Okay, so it's gonna be fine. Everything's fine. You guys all look as Olma uh, bursts forth this energy and hits the creature, and all of a sudden blinks out of existence. Olma blinks out of existence. What? To to the rest of the party, no longer there. Oma, you still you you still see everybody. <laughs> Everybody's still there. <laughs> to everyone else, Oma just completely disappeared. Holy shit. Where'd God. she go? Oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Oma! And, um, that is the end of Oma's turn. <laughs> so Man, I'm so um, glad this happened in the second episode. It's so great when this happens. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Next oh, up geez. is March. Uh March, you see Oma. Completely blink out of, out of existence. She handles that totally fine. She's, yeah, no. Um, March is going to fucking freak out because, <laughs> because that <laughs> is, yeah, March is, her initial immediate, well, my initial immediate reaction was on Kalik to, to sort of say, Kalik, uh, I, I, March wants to sort of go, Kalik, you okay? Oh, ma! Oh, ma! <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Oh my fucking god! What the fuck was that? Where is it? What is happening? Kaylee, are you okay? Does anyone have eyes on Olma? Anybody? 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 Did she just like no? <laughs> so she's so kind of like infuriated that she, her. My immediate reaction is going to be to just scream for like about 30, <laughs> 35 seconds. Well, you only have six seconds. Six second round. Six second round. <laughs> so there you go. So you're gonna waste, you're gonna waste you can five spend rounds. The next five rounds. Do it. I would like to then pull out a javelin and throw it in the, the where I was able to see that something had happened. Am, am okay. I? Well, am I able to see exactly what Oma had seen? Which was um, this you're area? gonna have to make a perception check to see if you can spot it. Okay, I will. I will do that. She's very stressed out right now. <laughs> Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen. You do see the the patch of water that's a little bit different than everything else. Okay. So yeah, you're able to throw a javelin. So make your I'm attack. I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna throw a javelin at it. Okay. Like cool. No concept of what what is happening right now. That's eighteen. <laughs> eighteen. That definitely hits. Uh, roll your damage. Okay. Oh, like a regular. That is 
seven points of bludgeoning. Nice. And okay. that's pretty much it on my end, except to continue to sort of almost like wander around the boat, screaming almost name out, <laughs> wondering mm-hmm. where the hell she is and what the heck just happened. Okay. Um, next up is Kellick. Kellick, what would you like to do? All right, so I've seen this child just disappear next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's just the thing that's happened. I'm not going to sweat that right now. I've got to focus. I just got m- nearly all of my life taken <laughs> from a single blow from this creature. So I'm going to <sighs> draw upon my resolve and uh, I will um, uh, begin to chant under my breath and uh, and look at my, my hand and and clench the muscles in it and just just hope that the power that I've been given is, is, will remain. And I say uh, for the first time, by the keeper, I bind my oath to your destruction, Ioro! And I cast a uh, guiding bolt at the crater below. Okay. Very cool. Eat him. And that is a 16 to hit. That hits. Nice. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Eat him. Uh, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> so much damage. I'm like double checking my math because it's so much. Uh, it's 20 points of breaking oh, damage. Oh my oh, gosh! I rolled two sixes and two fours. Jeez! Wow. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of dice. That yeah. is crazy. I mean, it's my for, last spell for the first, <laughs> for a first Oh level. no! <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and the the next attack on the creature gets an uh, advantage as nice. a result. So the, the oh wow from my hand, uh, a swarm of burning orange ash uh, as the as the sort of uh, like a ribbon, my bandage unfolds from my uh, from my arm. Uh, my hand glows with a bright orange light, and and ash swirls around it in a spiral and pours upward, and then dives down into the water. Blowing almost like, almost like the parting of the sea, the water just like pulls away as the as the guiding bolt travels through it to the creature. Nice, sick. All right, is that the end of your turn? That is. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Shreya. Uh, with all that rustling and parting of the water, do, do I do I wake up? Am I? Can uh, I? Can I yes, wake up? Okay, you do. Great. Uh, <laughs> you you do wake up. Um, you look around and you see. Chaos. You have no idea what's going on. Good morning. <laughs> Gah, how long was I out for? Uh, I. What is going on? I sort of gather my, get my bearings, uh, and I'm gonna attempt to just survey what's happening. Okay. Um, make an insight check. All right. Mm-hmm. To see if you can uh, discern from the people who are on the boat what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's missing a person. <laughs> yeah. 16. Uh, yeah, someone in the party is missing. <laughs> um, and uh, Kellick looks like he's taken uh, a punch to the face. Uh, my first reaction is going to be to try to help him. Uh, I don't have any healing spells per se, but I am proficient in medicine. Is there is there any way I could utilize my herbalism skills to heal him in the moment, or is that just something that like would happen outside yeah, the context that, of battle? That would have it has sort of a different use there. You wouldn't be able to do an immediate okay. uh, healing. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna like go over to to Kellick and 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 say. What's happening? What's going on? Can I use my reaction to respond? Yeah, yeah, definitely. (laughs) I'll just say, uh, there's a beast in the water, some sort of monster. Uh, Is it is it within? Probably all the time I have. How uh, how can I see anything out in the in the river? It's probably glowing. It's glowing at this point. The spectral ash is pouring around it from the guiding bolt. Yeah, you can DM you can just you. see sort of like a, a a portion of the water that's kind of glowing. Nice. Uh, 
if I were to attempt to attack it with my quarter staff, is it close enough to do that, or is it out in the you know larger mass of the river, far further away from the boat? It's five feet away from the boat, so you'd be able to to reach your staff out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was my movement out to the edge. Uh, I'm gonna mutter on my breath, senseless forces of darkness, and I'm gonna hold up my quarter staff into the air. Uh, tap the pink purple crystal against my forehead uh, and as I do the geometric patterns in the staff sort of glow in this purple pink like crystalline fashion and uh, the energy rushes up into the crystal toward the top Uh, it seems to glow with this aura as I cast shillelagh on it and uh, attempt to drive the quarter staff into this creature Okay, and that's at advantage, correct, Kalik? That's right. Uh, let me make sure, just to be certain. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think it's the next attack. Next attack roll made against the target before the end of your next turn Perfect. has advantage. So, uh, yeah, Shrai, roll that attack at advantage. Two, and that is... Uh, thir- the first one's 13. I may need to use that second... Dice roll, uh, thirteen hits. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Well, you could you could roll that one second. Oh, maybe uh, that second one, anyways, uh, to see if it's a yeah, crit. Good idea. Yeah. And it, DM, mm-hmm. just for clarification, is it is it just like an amorphous thing? Now that it's kind of lit, can we see its its makeup a little better? Is there is there a clear shape to it beneath us? You can see sort of like the outline of sort of a torso with like these weird tentacle like arms uh. it's uh but it is sort of amorphous uh besides that right thank you how did that second roll go shry uh it was a, it's a dirty 20 that do, it doesn't crit okay uh, yeah still hits um yeah so make that uh damage roll all right yes max damage uh that's nice. well, and uh the damage does become magical after I cast Shillelagh on that. So that nice. uh, becomes Oh, okay. It becomes uh twelve points of arcane damage, I believe. Oh, it changes the magic type? Maybe okay. it changes. The um is that the end of your turn? Yes. Uh as my as the tip of the energy around the crystal makes contact with the water, uh there's this uh what the energy that flows from the crystal sort of enwraps the the beast in the water for a second it goes out completely uh and then slowly it's silhouetted in that color again as the energy from the crystal explodes onto it nice okay um next up is flynn oh boy um does it look like we can pull are we pulling away from this or no one's rowing so we're slowing down um yeah you guys are pretty much at a standstill at this point. How close are we to the northern bank of the river? Um, I'm going to say you guys are pretty much in the middle mm-hmm. of the river. Yeah. Um, seeing someone being disappeared <laughs> um, it's kind of like freaks them out. But kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't think he thinks that he can do anything to this thing because it's water. I don't even know if he saw it. So he's going to pull off his bag and take out his rope and uh, can he can he tie it? This might be too stupid, but can he tie it to like the front of the boat? Is it like a I don't know what they're called in boating terms, but there's like a like an anchor point that he can like tie it onto like a piece of metal or something at the front of the boat and then like let it go to the back so if anyone starts to fall they have like a rope to grab onto um yeah there's I mean there's um like a little I can't remember what they're called uh, there's like yeah you know, hooks, like the edge of hooks them. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, um, yeah. yeah you can you can definitely tie it on right, one of those I'll, I'll go up to the front of the boat I'll tie up I'll, that is gonna be uh your action to sure. tie it I'll tie it up on the, the front of the boat and then I'll take it screw it and I'm just gonna throw it uh behind me so it trails okay. in case somebody falls off the boat they can grab the rope and nice. we can pull them along so i'll do that i'll i'll tie it up on the front 
I'll turn around. I'll throw it off the edge of the boat so it's kind of just dragging behind us. I don't know if okay. that's stupid, but hopefully it helps secure us. And I'll be like, guys, if any, if there's any problems, just grab the rope. We'll be totally fine. Um, where would Alma go? <laughs> that's my turn. I okay. don't know. <laughs> um, with that, uh, we are back at the top of the initiative as this water creature... Um, begins to extend its uh, tentacle-like appendage up over the boat again, and it is going to make a swing at... It's going to try and attack Flynn. Cool. So, Flynn does a 19 hit. Just hits, yes. Okay. 19. That is going to be... Seven points of bludgeoning damage. <gasps> Okay. And along with that, you you feel this this water tentacle appendage hit you and it sticks. It's not like normal water. It it sticks to you and you can feel it begin to tug mm -hmm. and pull at you. And it pulls you off the side of the boat. Oh, so I'm not I'm the rope, I'm not like holding on to that or anything, like um I'm going to say you can use a reaction to see if you can hold okay. on to the the uh, thing. So uh, make a make a just a straight dexterity sure. check. All right. Hopefully that's a good thing that I did is throw the rope. <laughs> yeah. Um, twenty one. Just by dex mod twenty one. This thing uh, rolled a twenty two. <gasps> no oh, way. Ah, bye guys. <laughs> oh my god. I've already lost two. <laughs> so you are pulled into the water sure. and you can feel this thing's uh tentacles wrap around you as you as you look down it's tough to see because it's like this water <laughs> creature within water. So it's tough to see but you can feel yourself yeah. being restricted. I love that he was just like guys don't worry yeah. it's going to be fine. <laughs> It's like, hey guys, I put this rope here. If we need it, it's coming. Whoa! I, I love that it attacked the one person who was just trying to set us yeah. up to like actually be okay. It was like, what's that? You hit me? You gave me damage? Don't care. Give me here the little one. All right, so okay. I'm in the water next to the boat. Under? Next to the boat, and you are, your head is fully submerged sure. in the water. Okay. <gasps> no! Jeez. So, that is its turn. Love it. Here we go. Next up. Right. Oma. <laughs> What would you like to do? You you can see everyone. You're yeah. still here. Why are you all screaming? I first first I shout. I'm right no here. No one can hear that. Come on, nobody can hear me. Ah! No one can hear that. No way. Oh, no. Sorry. I what happened? <laughs> what did you do, Olma? Um. Other creatures cannot hear you. Oh, no. <laughs> I love wild magic. So well, fun. I would still say it, so um, I don't know that. What are y'all yelling at? I'm right here, and I'm gonna. Um, oh man. Um. She can see us, right? Do I see? Yeah. yeah. Can I see? Um, can I see Flynn off the side of the boat? Yeah, you can see him just under the water. Um. Okay. Can I try to reach for him and pull him in? Sure. Onto the boat. Um, yeah, sure. If you, uh, um, ooh, if you want to reach out. I know what I want to do. Yeah. Tell me if I can do this. Um, can I, um, power up, um, some, um, energy inside my soul to have some shocking hands and reach into the water and see if it releases him from its grasp with shocking grasp. You can definitely try, try that. Yeah. Okay. I would like to try. For sure. <laughs> Um, so that's uh, I might that's an you. I'm sorry. To <laughs> an attack roll on your part, right, Oma? Uh huh. No, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So make an attack roll. Get him. Um. So Oma is going to um. She's walked over and she says, "Oh God! Oh gosh! Ah! Ah!" And she reaches her hands into the water to try and get her friend out um, unknowingly her oh god and freaking out has has uh, mixed with the arcane energy that's wildly spinning around her um, causes this reaction this action um, of <laughs> shocking grasp which is a um, 
21 to hit? Yeah, that hits for sure. Um, you reach out and uh, you reach your hand through the water and all of a sudden um, you can feel it's like a lot warmer water. It still, it still feels like water, but you hit this patch that feels a lot warmer um, as you let your shotgun grasp go. So roll that damage. Did oh, I pee in the water? Was... <laughs> <laughs> no, Flynn, Flynn did not pee in the okay, water. Good, this is okay, good. Okay, just like make sure that's not canon. That Flynn had. <laughs> that was so out. scary. Uh, just peed. It, it seems kind of like Flynn. <laughs> Shut up, Gellick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's um, seven points of lightning damage. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it did not like that, but yeah, it still it holds on to- It can't take reactions until the start of its next turn also. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, but it still does keep its grapple on flip. Nah. I'm okay. But, uh, you did a pretty decent chunk of damage to it. Um, Flynn, you're okay. okay. Yeah, she, her, her shock and grasp did not affect you. Cool. Uh, aside Absolutely. from being underwater and being drowned, you're totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Great. So I'll, I'll, all of a sudden I just see some the thing that's holding me get shocked. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see uh, her trying to help me. Next up is March. Um, oh, could they I... feel me? Could they feel oh. me when I walked over from one side to the other side of the boat? Oh, that's another thing to note. As soon as you cast this, you pop back into existence. Oh. Hey. <laughs> it's not a spell, though. It's it's a cantrip. Is it still the same? Yeah, as soon as you take an action. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That was going to be my question, was could we see this shock happening? Um, you just see me with my oh, hands no. in the water? Like, I pop back into existence? Yeah, and I'm like, I pop back into existence, like, <laughs> reaching over the side of the boat with my hands in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you attack or cast a spell, the, oh, the effect funny. ends. Cool. Oh, okay, that's a March. bummer. <laughs> um, so Marsh is going to be like, oh, do a little jump, see all go, the hell did you go? You know what? Explain later. Um, and she is going to walk over and to Kalik and just look at Kalik. And even though she is very worried about the fact that Flynn is underwater, um, she's going to, or rather I am going to do uh, lay on hands on Kalik. Nice. Okay. Nice. How many uh, points of healing are you going to give him? Um... Three. How many? <laughs> I feel like none. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> level one. Level one. Level one. <laughs> brutal. Um, y- yeah, th- three. Okay, Kellick, you get uh, three points of healing. The skin that's been flayed off my face from the the tentacle dragon across it begins to nice re piece itself back together. I give a grateful nod. Okay, uh, March, is that your turn? Uh... Yeah, because that's an action. Yeah. That's, okay. that's pretty much it. So, um, Newly healed. Kellick, what would you like to do? Right. Uh, well, I will uh, oh, uh, taking that as a kindness, uh, give a firm nod uh, so that I might continue to do destructive acts <laughs> instead of <laughs> healing myself. Really quickly, March is just going to be like, Flynn is overboard. He's underwater. We should probably do something about that. <laughs> I, I, I look back <laughs> to where I thought <laughs> Flynn was a second ago. <laughs> hey, I thought he said we were going to be. All right. <laughs> I told everybody uh, we should have taken the, the shoreline and walked along, but no, everybody wanted to take the boat. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Uh, and I will uh, cast uh, Toll the Dead uh, at nice. the creature. It's got to make a, a saving throw, a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. All right. That's an 11. 11 fails. Yay! Uh, okay. right, so that's a d12 because it's already been damaged. Yeah, get him. Uh, Kill it! Yeah. Make it go away. All right. Uh, it takes uh, eight uh, necrotic damage. Um, and wherever it's already been wounded, the things start to peel away. Uh, the, you, the the orange embers glow and peel further from, from where it was. All right. Um, 
Flynn, you are struggling in the water. You're you're moving around, and you feel the creature release and slowly lose tension as you're able to get your head up back above the water. <gasps> the creature you can feel floats off of you and disperses within the water as the creature is dead and we are now out <gasps> of the nation. Could I, um, could I kind of doggy paddle over to the, the rope that I have now draped over the boat? Yeah. I'll yeah. grab onto it and just start one hand over the other, just kind of like pulling myself up to the back and I'll hop over. Whew. Man, that was that was exciting, guys. Good job. We're we're. <laughs> woo. Give me a minute. I slowly take oh, my hands. Closer. I slowly take my hands out of the water and just shake them off. Can I uh, second win? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, while I'm sitting on that edge of the boat at the back, I'm just like, <sighs> when you just kind of see me take a few deep breaths and close my eyes and just just calm my breathing, and then I open them back up. I look like more relaxed and calm, and I'll, I'll roll my. Out of curiosity, DM, while he's rolling, uh, how how many uh, healing kits would I have left uh, at the the camp with? How many might I have collected uh, before we left? Like full healing kits, like uh, medical kits. Um, um, yeah, I guess you would have the equivalent of of two fully stocked med kits. Yeah, two. Great. How's everyone doing? Yo. I love second lane, guys. I'm back up to full now. Second Everybody's lane is good. Rad. Yeah. Everybody's good? Yeah, Everybody? I'm good. What just happened? I'm still hurt, but I, I don't... Uh, I'm going to need a minute. To like to how hurt? Oh, just a bit. I'm just, so you can see that there's just like still damage to my face around me. Uh-huh. Could we pull over and um, take I, a minute? I, I can pull out a little I can... vial from my pocket. I just found this. Um, <laughs> maybe it could help? Don't uh, don't bother. I uh, I sort of hold up my bag. Uh, I've got a lot of practice putting wounds back together, so uh, I can just take a second. If somebody else wants to row the boat, I can probably do it right here. I would love to row the boat. I could also help with what ails you. I have a uh, and I open up a little uh, leather bound pouch under my wing. I have some skills with some herbs that might be able to help what ails you. Okay, okay, we get it. Everybody's a healer. <laughs> yeah. Nobody needs any Makes potions. Makes a doctor feel kind of useless. Fine. Also, March, I'm so proud of you. You made you helped Kellick, Cal- and you <sighs> never do that, even for yourself. I'm you, so proud of you. Why are you talk? Why are you? Shh, why are you bringing it up? I'm sorry. And then she, and March is just uh, going to kind of take a second, and I'm going to just look and immediately just engulf Alma in just a big old bear hug of like, please don't ever disappear like that again. That was very stressful. I didn't know where you went and I thought you had drowned and or just evaporated into thin air. What the hell was that? What are you talking about? You disappeared. No, I was... Wait, where did she go? There was a moment there you blipped. Yeah, Uh, yeah, you were gone. Yeah, that was was a... Like, you 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 couldn't hear me, you couldn't see me, you couldn't nothing? Correct. No, I thought she'd gone overboard. I don't yeah. think she went overboard. She looks very dry. I didn't go anywhere. I was here the whole time. Yeah, that's why I jumped overboard. I I thought maybe you um <laughs> I thought maybe you went overboard. So I figured I would jump over after doing the rope. That's why I did the rope too, you know, just to oh, make sure everyone's okay. But then nice. you appeared on the boat. So I was like, okay, huh. I guess we'll come back up. Oh, well, that's was really nice of you, Flynn. Hey, you know. I didn't. I was here yeah. the whole time. Just, yeah. just me. Um, but you know, sometimes that happens. I'm sure sometimes it happens. To, that happens? I'm sure it happens to Kellick mm-hmm. all the time. You know, I'm sure it happens to him when he's got all his what's it gabadoobles that he's throwing out. You know, it it just happens sometimes. You know, oh. I can't really argue with that logic. I think that's that fairly tracks with my experience uh, these days. So, uh, huh. You know, things happen when you use magic. It, it's not a, it's not unheard of for there to be side effects. Can yeah, we, uh, side effects is a great word. Yeah, they're all just side effects. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. DM, can I well, do some yeah. kind of what I know if how what's going on just from my training? I don't know if that's been brought up in anything that I've been taught at at, at the, the collective. 
Would I know yeah. what's going on? So, yeah. Are you, like, thinking back to your training? Yeah, I'm just thinking back, like, I'm sure they at some point taught us a little bit about magic just for what's to come. And, like, would I know if this is, like, normal? Yeah, so you can either make a history check or a nature check. Sure. Which one is better? That's what I'll do. Well, they're both the same. Uh, man, I'm rolling. So good. Uh, 19 either way. Yeah. Uh, 19 either way. Um, you would know that um, this creature is called a water weird. Um, and it uh, you, you, you've heard about this in some of your previous lessons. Um, normally, it's, it's a creature that comes from the water, uh, the plane of water. So a little bit strange to see one here. Um, the ones that you've heard of have usually been like pulled through or have been brought through by something else. Um, so to see one out here in sort of the wild is a little bit strange to you. Um, while I'm sitting on the edge of the boat, um, we're, we're like recovering. I'll go into my bag and I'll pull out my a, a, a tome, like a, a book that I have. And uh, I'll just kind of open it up, and I'll just start writing in it. I'm just gonna mm-hmm. jot down stuff about this creature we just fought. And I'll I'll take okay. one of the oars. I'll take the is the oar still glowing? One of them. How long uh, does that last? Uh, lasts. Uh, I think it's an hour. An hour? It's an hour of light. Yeah. Uh, yes, one hour. One hour. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's definitely still glowing. Okay. My guess is that my torch probably went overboard. Um. Well, when I, when we, when Kelly got attacked and because we couldn't, it can't really, it doesn't really have like a stand or anything in the boat. Yeah. So if I'm not, if I'm using my hands, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to hold it. So I would have tossed it overboard. So I'll take the oar that's glowing and I will help whoever assists me to kind of keep rowing to just kind of try to get out to the, to the north bank of the, of the river to get to the end of it. I'm still going to be on the other side rowing on mine. <laughs> Try, do you see your 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 runes anywhere? Your symbols. Uh, I'm gonna look out across the trees and see if I see any of the carvings that I'd be used to seeing as the elvish wards or directions. Yeah, make a perception check. Oh, where to go? Oh, that's not very good. Uh, that is a seven. A seven. Uh, you're looking out into the trees. You're you're trying to to sort of concentrate and focus your eyes, you're not able to see any of the runes that you uh, have become accustomed to seeing around these parts. Um, But looking out amongst the trees, uh, after looking, you notice the shadows from the trees begin to move in strange ways. And they begin to flow in ways that aren't natural and aren't coming from the direction of the sun. And these shadows begin to inch out and creep towards the water on the bank that you guys are heading towards. And with that, we are going to end today's <gasps> oh, session. Oh, no. oh, those spooky vibes are coming right to kill there. us. Oh, my God. Um, I had a lot of fun with that one. I hope you guys did, oh, too. So much fun. I want to keep playing. So with that, um, we're going to call it right there. I hope you guys had a great time listening. Um, and we can't wait to see you guys again next week. Hey, guys. This is Shane. I play Kella on Venture Forth, and I wrote all the music for the podcast. If you like what you're hearing and you want to check us out on other social media platforms, you can. We are Venture Forth DND on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. We're also on Patreon if you want to throw some dollar dollar bills in our way. And we're on Clubhouse as well uh, in DND. Uh, not DND Club, just DND on Clubhouse. And we host a lot of discussions and a couple uh, ongoing games in our uh, sort of extended universe called the savage isles uh if you want to give us a holler on any of those platforms we'd be happy to hear from you thanks so much for listening